Merry Christmas. Happy New Year's. Time to get spooked. What? This may not seem fitting, but I don't I don't care. No, I love a good scare. I love reading horror stories and playing video games. Video game horror based stuff is hard to get right. Especially when it's based on an already existing game like Mario, Sonic, uh, Conquer. I mean, I hate creepypasta as a whole, but it's gotten really repetitive over the years. Because every story has to be a lost episode or a scary game. As a matter of fact, I'm going to let you check out my creepypasta right now. And here we go. I'm calling the police. 911. I am the police. <laughs> I miss my wife tales. <laughs>
I'm sorry, but uh, Luigi was doing nothing in this video. This is false advertising. Luigi is supposed to win by doing nothing. I can't believe they got that wrong. Uh, in fact, I'm going to show you the canonical version, the real version of what would actually happen. No, I have blessed you with that. Time to start analyzing why this is one of my favorite creepy video series. A creepy collection of videos that I've seen recently. So video number one is a simple video. It's simply called Mario Party DS Anti-Piracy Screen. We start off our little experience with a minigame, one that you may have seen a lot. Cherry Go Round. You spin around in circles, you throw cherries. It's like the Olympics, except you're very small, because that's what the point of the game is, you're very small. Witty commentary. So the game starts up as normal and, uh... uh ooh. That's not good. The person who's playing this game is clearly not owning an official copy. It's playing this creepy music as well. Actually, this music is pretty catchy. I'm gonna put this on my iTunes. Does Nintendo even do iTunes? Nintendo, you need to get on this right now. I mean it. Put your music on iTunes, especially the ones that involve anti-piracy. Now this screen goes on for about, a, about 20 minutes, and it's kind of unnerving. It just plays this music, there's a message saying, turn the DS off. Ooh, that's pretty straightforward. I think if I was a kid, that would be kind of freaked out. I would throw the game out the window and buy a legitimate copy. And then burn my DS. This video, in general, was really well made. I mean, this was... This was modding, I think, because modding's been around for a while for the DS. Or it could simply be Photoshop at its peak potential. Either way, it's actually really well made, and kind of unnerving. It reminds me a lot of Petscop. A lot of the stuff in Petscop was also very subtle. Stuff that you'd legitimately see in one of these games if they were actually real. Nothing that's outright jumping in your face or saying, You're gonna die! Because that wouldn't make sense. This is a Mario game, by the way tried to do that, every Karen in existence would try to sue Nintendo, even though they bought the game illegally. Now on to video number two. This one is just a soundtrack. Yeah, the song is a bop, and he did the job of extending it to 15 minutes, so this man is a legend. I can listen to this while I study for bullshit. If you wanted to hear a song in its full glory, then just listen to this video. Or watch it be one of those weirdos who watches the screen for 15 minutes. Next video is probably my personal favorite. It's the anti-piracy item shop dialogue plus secret boss. Ooh. In HD. HD is always better. Because it's better for me to take footage. It doesn't look like the inside of a burning potato. This one starts off much differently. This time we are on the main board. Kamek's library to be exact, because I know my Mario Party stages. Also, I sucked at this game when I was a kid and uh, had a hard time getting through this stage, so I don't want to talk about it. So Luigi lands on the item shop. Ah, oh, yes, we get to meet our boy, the friendly Monty Mole, the guy that's going to give us some good shit. So what have you got for us today, my friend? Can I offer you a nice egg in this trying time? Uh, yes, we have our good items. Huh? You're sorry? What are you sorry about? Did Luigi need to go shoplifting again? He need to get some Totinos? Oh wait, you don't serve criminals? Luigi, I told you. You're not making enough money for standing around doing nothing. Oh wait, it doesn't have to do that. It has to do with the piracy. I forgot. Ooh, would you look at this. Hey look, it's a Godzilla NES reference. I respect that. There's nothing you can do. Well, that's not very useful. What am I supposed to do now? Oh, okay, apparently I don't have to do anything. Ah, I'm a natural at that. 
Also, the button prompts are all taken out. Oh wait, this is just that mole minigame. You know, the two-player one, where you dig your way out of a hole while Monty Mole barrels after you faster than a Black Friday shopper. Oh wait, there's no partner. So we can't move. So yeah, he got, he got him. And the game stopped working again. Alright, we're back to the piracy screen. Time to jam out. Okay, so after that, we move on to the next video, which is basically an HD version of the previous one. This time it's that sliding minigame that I hate. Because you have to jump, and then sometimes you don't jump that good, and then you lose. So then the game glitches out again, and it moves us to the piracy screen again. Now, right now I want to admit that this has actually been really interesting so far. It never strays out of the possibility of this being an actual anti-piracy measure. Because normally by this point something like this would go gung-ho and just drop a bunch of bullshit on us from Mount Everest. Normally something like this would basically be like, oh, look at this horror-themed stuff. Like just saying, ooh, there's a ghost in the game. Or, ooh, this is uh, completely personalized. It changes depending on who's playing it. Wow, Mario! Nothing that this does ever strays out of the realm of possibilities in our real world. It doesn't feel like there's some crazy AI programming working on here. It just feels like Nintendo went really hard on their anti-piracy here. Instead of just outright crashing the game, instead they just let you play the game. They make you think you're playing the game, but instead they're just letting you play the game to a point where they can basically ruin it for you. Because you're a pirate and no one likes you. Same Mario Party DS anti-piracy measure still applies, and it still feels like this is anti-piracy. Nothing in this video seems like it's going away from the anti-piracy thing. All this stuff can be used as an anti-piracy measure. I've seen it in other games. Like Spyro, Enter the Gungeon, Cuphead. This is stuff that can actually be implemented as anti-piracy measures. Nothing here ever seems like it's going too far away from what the idea is. It's anti-piracy. The game isn't threatening to kill you just for pirating a video game. It's still gonna hold you to it, though. Instead of providing an easy wall to get through, it does what Spyro does and add a bunch of walls. And all these walls are trying their best to ruin your experience. That's why I think of this series so highly. It's creepy, because if you were a kid that got this copy, you'd probably be pretty scared shitless as well because of how weird this is. The stuff is already unnerving with the music, it's even more unnerving with just how the game is functioning. Now that I'm done with that little tangent, I'm gonna continue you later. I'm gonna look at this final video, as of right now, because I don't know if he's done uploading yet, and I might do a continuation if you all like this video, please. So in order to properly delineate this last video, I have to actually tell you about the game a little bit more. So, on the last five turns on whatever game you're playing, if you're playing the story mode, the game will automatically default to 20 turns. The last five turns will start with Bowser lining everyone up and taking the loser and saying, Hey, I'm uh, gonna help you out because apparently I like to help people out because I'm just a stand-up guy. Then he gives you a choice of stuff like taking people's coins, gaining an extra star, I don't like that one. So the lineup goes as you normally expect. And Ouija's in last place because... poor Ouija. And then we go on to Bowser doing his normal spiel of being a nice guy because Bowser's the coolest guy, apparently. And ouch. Okay, so this says thwomp, 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 thwomp. Also, I like the fact that he's reluctant to hit the button that says to stop the thing because he's kind of creeped out by this, and I actually really like that. And then Bowser says, Gumru chumps like you have no place in this party. Um, Bowser? I think you're a criminal yourself. You've taken Peach more times than I thought, and you've also commandeered her kingdom. I think pirating is the least of your problem. This is a, some weird universe where apparently you're pirating an entire universe. Instead of giving you a reward or some sort of pity prize, uh, he crushes you with a thwomp. And then piracy screen, and then ending. So, time to talk about my overall thoughts. So this series is really good. I recommend watching it, because this guy is underrated. And if he watches my video, I would please say that I would thank you so much for watching my video, and I... I really appreciate your craft, man. This is probably one of my favorite horror-related Mario stuff out there right now. Because it's so good at 
building an atmosphere. Also, I know that there's going to be a ton of ripoffs and people just going anti piracy measure. 3 a.m. challenge, Sonic the Hedgehog 4, Sonic kills me. Because I have the sense, I have the, the cringe sense. I know stuff like this is going to become a fad. Either way, it's still really good. I love looking deeper into video games and checking out their anti-piracy measures and stuff. See, I'm going to compare this to Mario 64 personalized because it's the closest thing I can compare it to. Not only are they both Mario, but they both go for a unique feel of found footage. The thing about Mario 64 personalized is partway through you realize that the game is apparently alive or has a weird AI in it that does, does your personal stuff. It reminds me a lot of the Mickey Mouse creepypasta, you know that one? The one that if I say the name of it, YouTube will probably uh, punch me in the face so hard that my head literally orbits the planet. I'm gonna say it, but you know what it is. It's the same weird AI living game type stuff. When you do it with the material like Mario, it just doesn't make sense because Mario 64 has been completely deconstructed to its very pixels, nanopixels, every inch of the grass has been analyzed. There's no sense of this could happen to you at any moment, or what if this happened to you, because the second we start getting into the weird, creepy, go back and Wario head, spooky, then it becomes a little bit ridiculous. That's probably why it became a big old meme. The creator didn't like that one. This doesn't feel like Nintendo decided to do a weird experiment on the people. It feels like an anti-piracy measure, and I can point to many examples of what this is like. I already have. If you have issues with it, you can talk to my editor, which is me. <laughs> so overall, what would I say about this? Well, if I was to put it on a scale, I'd say 7 out of 10. It's not perfect. I would love to see more of this series, like, for instance, taking the Hammer Bro boss minigame and instead making it basically impossible. It plays like normal, but instead the Hammer Bro goes really fast. It's literally impossible to tell what notes he played, because he played them so fast and he played so many of them. And then the game crashes once you lose. Or goes to that screen once you lose. Or take the dual minigame and turn it into something weird or broken. Like, I love it whenever this type of thing goes in. Most of the stuff is subtle anyways. Like some of the stuff you wouldn't even notice if you haven't played the game. Like if you haven't played the game, you probably wouldn't know how the boss minigames work compared to normal minigames. You probably wouldn't even know the mole minigame is a multiplayer minigame. And I love the fact it kind of accentuates the feeling of everyone else leaving you because you're a cheater and no one likes you. The holy judgment is being brought upon you because you're, you're a mean old pirate. So yeah, that was my first commentary video. Well, my recent commentary video. And I'm actually analyzing stuff instead of just making a weird rant because that's what I used to do. I'm analyzing stuff. I want you guys to give me some feedback. Let me know if you like the video, like, subscribe if you like this stuff, or even my boss battle stuff, because I'll get back to that soon. Merry Christmas to y'all, and I really appreciate y'all for watching the video, because if I didn't have you guys, this channel would have never gotten up. And if you're newer and just getting to this video now, I appreciate you watching it. Now y'all have a Merry Christmas.